Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, I got my weekend comic book haul to share with you guys here today. Picked up what I feel like are a lot of really, really cool books, and I'm excited to talk about them. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps support the channel doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let's get into this pile here right now. And one of the things I like to try to do when I'm talking about my comic book calls is see if I can frame them in a way that, you know, maybe provides some value or at least, you know, offers my thought process into why I picked up the books that I did. And one of the things I think is important, or at least when I think about all the books that I got is these are all books that at various times in my collecting over the past, you know, couple years or so, I've been tempted to want to buy these books at premium prices on eBay. But I always have to remind myself to trust the hunt, so to speak, right? Like you have to let books find you and you have to believe that over time, if you're patient enough, these books will eventually make their way to you at a price that you feel very comfortable with. And the books I got in this haul are really, you know, examples of that to me personally, uh, specifically that of this first one right here, which is of course, Amazing Spider-Man number 194, first appearance of Felicia Hardy, The Black Cat. Now this is a book that, you know, I've uh, talked about as being one of the books that kind of haunts me in my comic book hunting day. So I have a particular love-hate relationship with this book. Uh, one time I remember coming across it being sold at like $50 in this LCS. And I was, you know, I, I saw it and I was like, oh, I'm totally gonna go buy this book. But I decided to walk around the store for a little while. And while I was walking around the store, I heard someone else say, hey, can I check out that book? And they ended up buying it from me. And that really, really haunted me because I had the opportunity to get this book and I didn't pull the trigger on it or at least fast enough. And that's why one of the reasons why Whenever, whenever I go hunting, I always go to the wall books first because to me, if they if there's a mega, mega key on there and it's something I want to get, I just immediately uh, ask the LCS person to put it aside. But I didn't get that book at that time. Uh, I've been tempted many times over you know the last couple years or so to buy, buy this book off of eBay, but I just never really felt like it was the right one for me. Um, but with everything going on, you know, in these last couple months, uh, a lot of talk about you know Madam Web and everything that's going on. A lot of people thinking that. Uh, Black Cat could be one of those next characters that come up into you know the Sony verse, and uh, I decided that you know when I found this book at the right price, uh, I was definitely going to go pick it up. So I was out there hunting, went to one of my LCSs, saw them uh, selling this book for 120, which is actually not a bad price uh, considering what they're going for right now off of eBay. Uh, so I definitely had to pull the trigger on this one. This one's a nice presenting copy. I mean, the the guy has it graded at like a fine or so, which I think is probably an okay grade. But I think that you know if if you know, given this some love, some clean and press and stuff, I definitely think you can get a bump. As you can see, it, you know, the colors are really nice, presents really nicely. Um, and this is a book that I think is pretty cool. Like I'm not necessarily like the biggest Black Cat fan. I mean, I love Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse characters, but for me, Black Cat is uh, a character that I, I'm, I'm happy to have that book. Uh, and maybe, you know, we'll see what, what happens when, if, if in fact we end up getting a movie on it. I really do think that that's going to be a book that is sort of a, I'm hesitant to call it a blue chip key because of the date range that it came out. I think that there's probably a decent amount of copies out there, but I really do like this character. She seems to be a mega favorite with a lot of comic book collectors, and uh, I think we all know why. All right, this next book I got right here is another book that, you know, I've been tempted to buy this version of this book so many times, but let me show it to you guys first. This one I got here is Defenders number 18, first full appearance of The Wrecking Crew. Now, of course, I've talked about this book on the channel many, many times. I've talked about The Wrecking Crew, uh, how they're just B-tier villains that I just have a fondness for. Uh, and it does feel like, uh, you know, the rumors right now are that we're gonna be getting The Wrecking Crew in the She-Hulk show uh, later on this year in August. And, you know, I have a, a few different copies of this book. Uh, I've had copies that I've g moved on with, uh, but I've never had a copy that I felt like was, you know, 9.4, 9.6, possibly 9.8 potential. Uh, and I finally came across this one. It was being sold at $30. I instantly swooped it up. And when I look at this thing, this thing is beautiful. Like it, maybe there is like some pressable spine ticks right here. Like I, I think I see like maybe one or two, maybe it's like a 9.6 candidate. I'm not re ready to anoint it a 9.8. Uh, but I definitely think that this is a really high grade copy, certainly the highest grade copy that I've personally ever owned. And, uh, you know, there's been times in my past where I've been uh, browsing eBay thinking about, you know, buying like a, a 9.4 CGC copy of that, you know. So, uh, I, but I always told myself, you know, hey, trust the hunt, you know, believe in the process. Eventually this book is gonna find you. You're eventually gonna be able to find a high grade copy of this. 
And uh, this past weekend is finally the book that found me. All right, this next book right here is another book that, you know, I've come across this one a bunch of times, but I've just never picked it up. Uh, this one is Howard the Duck, number one, uh, first solo series book for Howard the Duck. Of course, Howard the Duck makes his first appearance in Adventures into Fear, number 19, the Man-Thing uh, series. And then he would go on to have his own Howard the Duck run here in Howard the Duck number one. Uh, I found this one for $15. It's probably a mid-grade copy, not the nicest copy you've ever seen, but I, I've never owned this book and I felt like picking it up. It definitely feels like with Howard the Duck, uh, you know, and Seth Green, it does seem like maybe they're gonna maybe, you know, use him a little bit more in the MCU. I don't think he'll ever be really a main character, but I fe feel like there's a lot of people out there who do love Howard the Duck. And, uh, you know, this is one of those things where I, I, I actually really do love this cover. I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of people think that Howard the the Duck is a meme character, but I remember growing up on that Howard the Duck uh, movie in the 80s, and I personally really loved it, so I have a fondness for this character. And uh, if this was the cover of Adventures into Fear 19, I think Adventures into Fear 19 would be uh, a book that is already expensive, but it would be even more expensive uh, than it is. All right, this next book I got right here is one that, uh, you know, definitely feels like a good timing to pick this one up, but this one is Iron Man number 219, First Appearance of Ghost. This was a book that, you know, I found in one of those back bins. I was digging around. Actually, it was only priced at $8, which is pretty good. It's like a VF copy. It's not, it's definitely not a near mint copy, uh, which is why I think they kind of had it uh, marked down. But of course, you know, we all know Ghost is in the MCU, came out in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And with the recent announcements of the Thunderbolts, there's a lot of speculation that Ghost might be a character on that particular team. Now, this is another one of those books that, you know, I've talked about many times on the channel. There's been times where I've wanted to buy more copies off of eBay, but this is one that I always tell myself, just wait, you know, you're gonna be able to go out there. Anytime there's a book in the Copper Age, I always believe that I'm gonna find it out there in the wild. So I never try to overextend for this one. And uh, this is the copy that finally found me. So happy to pick this one up. I definitely think Ghost is a pretty cool character and I'm sure we're gonna see more of her in the MCU. All right, this next book right here is kind of a cool one, uh, not necessarily a key, although I do think that this is a key, but this one is Submariner number 52. And what is the significance of this? Well, would you guys believe me when I said that this is actually the second appearance of Sunfire? Uh, Sunfire, of course, is the mutant character uh, within context of the X-Men. Uh, he makes his first appearance in X-Men number 64, and he was one of those mutants that was originally recruited on that giant-sized X-Men team, at least within in terms of the context to that story. He would later leave the team, but he would kind of hang around in the mutant verse for a while. And for that reason, there's actually been a lot of people speculating that maybe Sunfire is going to be one of the characters that come out with the X-Men in the MCU. I mean, certainly with the MCU wanting to have more diverse characters. Maybe they want to bring an Asian character in there. Sunfire is a Japanese mutant. It would make a lot of sense if they wanted to utilize this character. I always felt like he was kind of underused in a way. I mean, he definitely uh, is, he's kind of like that Submariner personality where he's a little bit of a firecracker uh, and he, you know, doesn't play well with others and has a little bit of a temper. And I do think that there could be some interesting stuff done with Sunfire. But this right here is his second appearance. Found this book for five bucks. Figured why not? You know, Submariner books are definitely hot. And that one is one that, you know, I feel like it obviously it's never going to be, you know, super valuable unless we actually get Sunfire in the MCU. But hey, you never know. Second appearances, I think that they're pretty cool. All right, this next one right here is one that I've talked about a bunch of times on the channel. Uh, this is Marvel Team Up number 55. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the first appearance of the character known as the Gardener. Now, I really, really love this book. Every time I find it, I find myself picking it up. I actually really love the cover with Warlock and Spider-Man. But of course, I pick it up for the reasons being that it is the first appearance of the Gardener, who, if you guys know, is one of the cosmic elders of the universe and actually held the Time Stone uh, when Thanos was doing his Thanos quest to acquire all the infinite Infinity gems for himself uh, before he would do the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. And the Gardener is a character where, you know, I look at the landscape for the MCU, I feel like we've seen Ego, we've hinted at Infinity, we've talked about the Living Tribunal. I feel like it's only a matter of time before they utilize the Gardener in some way, shape, or form. The Gardener uh, has sort of been retconned to have some ties with Groot. Um, because of the, you know, uh, tree growing plant aesthetics. And so for me, I feel like the Gardener would make a lot of sense to, you know, sort of be that kind of uh, uh, joke character, like how Benicio Del Toro is the collector and how Jeff Goldblum is the grandmaster. I feel like we could get like a, you know, a, a notable celebrity actor to play the Gardener eventually. And that would be pretty cool to have out there in a Marvel space. All right, this next book here is one that, you know, you can't pass this up. Every time I see it being sold under $20, I pretty much always pick this one up, but this is Web 
web of spider-man number one i've talked about this one many times on the channel i've talked about how this is the book that i would personally start my collection with if i was on a you know a budget of like 100 bucks uh, i definitely would always pick up this book i absolutely love i think this is one of the best covers like there there is in comic books uh just personally and with everything going on you know later on it seems like we'll get another tom holland trilogy they'll probably do the black suit uh version of that uh this incidentally is the last issue that uh, Peter Parker wears the black suit. So that's kind of its key distinction outside of the fact that it is the number one uh, book of this issue. But uh, yeah, he would. this would be the last time that Peter Parker wears a suit and then the suit would make its way over to uh, to Eddie Brock Venom and that would be the kind of the history of Peter Parker wearing the black suit. So kind of a cool book in that sense outside of the fact that it is Amazing Cover. Uh, I was in that Spider-Man section so I was digging around and I actually found a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 365. Uh, this is the first... I don't know what you want to call it, cameo appearance, or maybe it's the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. It's the preview of Spider-Man 2099. Uh, but this definitely seems to be one of the books that has been really hot in the market. Like everybody chases this thing. I mean, I think the hologram covers are really, really fun to collect. Uh, definitely give me the member berries uh, when I was picking up books out there uh, in, in the 90s in the Copper Age. And this one I found for 10 bucks. You know, based on where the prices are with it now, you know, it tends to sell around that $20, $25 mark. Uh, so I've, I decided, like, I'd add this one back to my collection. Uh, I've had this book a couple times before, but I've moved on with my copies. Um, and I decided to pick it up again for myself. We'll see. I might uh, end up moving on with that one. All right, these next two books I won't be labor talking about because no, none of you guys are going to care about them. But I think that they're cool. Uh, these books right here are World of Warcraft the uh, con exclusive preview and World of Warcraft issue number one. Uh, I just happen to love World of Warcraft. I played way too much of it in my younger days, so I have an affinity personally to the World of Warcraft comic books. This is sort of my oddball stuff uh, that I like to collect. But uh, one of the cool things about this is that this uh, cover right here is actually drawn by Jim Lee. So uh, when when I was at uh, TorpedoCon last year and Jim Lee was there, there was a lot of discussion of like, oh, should I get a Jim Lee signature? And uh, one of the books that I would 100% have him sign is that World of Warcraft series right there. But I picked those up for a couple bucks. They're not, you know, pretty expensive, but you never really know. I actually do think that eventually we're going to get a World of Warcraft to movie legendary pictures owns the rights to it there's been conversations about it and when that happens kind of like other books out there in the market that are related to like godzilla or thundercats or whatever i do think that these world of warcraft books are probably going to get hot in the market as a result of that all right, these last couple books I have before the last book I have is, uh, you know, I'm working on my Avengers run and I was actually able to find a bunch of Avengers books, you know, some run fillers. I'll just quickly flip through uh, Avengers number 36. Uh, I don't think there's anything too significant about this one. Uh, Avengers number 39, uh, actually a Pence variant I was able to find for myself, you know, the 10D right there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I don't think I have any Pence Avengers comic books. Uh, this one, Avengers number 42, just another sort of filler for the run. And then last but not least, Avengers number 92. Nothing too significant to talk about for those particular books other than the fact that I need them for my Avengers run. And currently where I am, I'm like basically, I think I'm like 72 out of 100. So I'm getting pretty close. You know, we're, we're getting down to less than a third that I need f to finish it out or maybe almost a quarter now. All right, the last book I picked up for myself is one that I personally think is super cool. Probably has a really long shot outside chance to be a spec character for the MCU. Uh, but this one right here is Strange Tales number 102. First appearance of Bentley Whitman otherwise known as The Wizard. Now, if you are a Fantastic Four fan, you definitely know about The Wizard. The Wizard uh, would join the group, the Frightful Four, alongside Sandman and Trapster and Medusa. Uh, the Wizard has been, you know, kind of a villain character who I feel like has a lot of potential to be a little more iconic than they are. I feel like, you know, when we think about the uh, gallery of villains, you got your your top tier, which is like the Magnetos and the Galactuses and the Doctor Dooms. Then you get your kind of like tier after that, which is, you know, maybe it's like the Mandarin and the Leader and Enchantress. And then you get your tier after that. And I feel like the Wizard is kind of in that, you know, tier just below that where it's like, you know, the hardcore comic book collector has seen them before, but you know, normies definitely don't know who he is. But if you're a Fantastic Four fan, you know about the potential of this character and i really really do like this book i mean being that it is such an early strange tales book 
1962, I believe that it is. And I was actually able to come across this one, which you know you really don't come across them too often. Uh, it's a it's about a VG plus copy. Found it for 85 bucks, uh, which to me I felt like was a great price to pay for this one. The colors are really beautiful on this. The red is really really nice, and it presents beautifully. Uh, I have another copy of this thing, and for me, I, I'm I'm happy to move on with that one because this is a much nicer grade. Uh, but when I found it, I decided, hey, like definitely pick this one up. Uh, when, when I bought my original copy of it, uh, that's one of those instances where I thought to myself, uh, you know, I, I really kind of feel like I, I would love a higher grade version of this thing. So I've looked on eBay uh, before to maybe pull the trigger on one, but I decided to sort of trust the hunt with that one and felt like maybe even though there's an outside chance because it is such a rare book, I'll probably come across it again. Uh, but, you know, finally I did and I'm happy that I was able to pick it up. So uh, that's my comic book haul, just showing off some of the cool books I got for myself. A lot of these books are ones that, again, I've been tempted to buy before, but I believed in the hunting process. And that is what I would say to you guys, you know, trust the hunt, let books find you, have that patience. You know, you don't need to FOMO buy them uh, on eBay. I mean, again, if it's a book you really want, go for it. By all means, get your hands on that book. But if it's a book that you've always sort of been curious about, just, just believe like one day you're going to go out there, you're going to go out there in the wild hunting and the book is going to find you and you're not going to have to pay that eBay premium price. Anyways, that's all for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next one.